All right, this is a quickie little video which just gives you a quickie little intro to the brachial plexus. After you watch this video, you should be able to draw the brachial plexus quickly, and you'll learn a little bit about its parts and some of the names of its terminal branches. So let's get going here. We're going to learn to draw it here. This is a modified method of uh, Adelaide. So what I like to do is I like to draw four boxes first. And it would behoove you to follow along with a blank piece of paper, put down that Jimmy John sa uh, sandwich, and pay attention. Draw four boxes. And what these boxes are, they represent the vertebrae. CV5 is cervical vertebrae 5. So we've got the 5th cervical vertebrae, the 6th cervical vertebrae, the 7th cervical vertebrae, and the 1st thoracic vertebrae. So C5, C6, C7, T1 vertebrae. I label them like this so as to, uh, not to confuse these with the nerve roots that are named, you know, C5, 6, 7, etc. All right, the first thing you're going to do after you got the boxes drawn is draw a Y. A Y on its side. One part of the Y comes above cervical vertebrae 5. The other part of the Y comes below cervical vertebrae 5. Let's draw a second lazy Y. This leg of the Y comes above thoracic vertebrae 1. This leg comes below. Now we're going to draw another Y, but we're going to flip it. Boom. There we go. So the Y end, the opened end, is this way. And that originates between cervical vertebrae 6 and cervical vertebrae 7. Now what we've done is added a sideways M. A sideways M. And see how the peaks of the M connect to the ends of the top and the bottom Y. Let's look at that again. A sideways M, or if you prefer a W, boom. The peaks or the mountains of the M connect here and here. All right, now we're going to come back here. Between this upper line and this line, we're going to draw an X or a multiplication sign. Below that, we're going to draw a diagonal or a division sign. Boom. Or a slash. So we've got an X here and then half an X down here. And this portion is pointing in the same direction as this chunk of the M. So that's the main body of the brachial plexus. So why don't we name the different chunks of the brachial plexus? This first part here is known as the roots of the brachial plexus. Actually, what they are is ventral rami off of the spinal nerves in this vicinity. And these ventral rami are labeled cervical root C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. Notice how the nerve root C5 is named as it comes out above the corresponding vertebral body. So C5 comes out above C5 vertebrae. C6 above C6 vertebrae. C7 above C7 vertebrae. And then nature plays a nasty trick. C8 comes out below the C7 vertebrae. There it is no eighth cervical vertebrae. So it's nature's way of adding an extra nerve in here. And then from then on, the named nerve roots come out below the corresponding vertebral body. So T1 comes out below thoracic vertebrae 1, the first thoracic vertebrae. And this dashed line here just kind of shows you where the roots end. The next section we're interested in is called the trunks. We call these trunks right here. So you can see... C5 and C6 come to together. C8 and T1 roots come together. This one st stays alone. 
So we have a superior, middle, and inferior trunk of the brachial plexus, the large spaghetti-like network of nerves coming out of the spinal cord to innervate the arm, the shoulder, arm, forearm, and hand. This is the brachial plexus. Now we have divisions. So that X sign and that division sign or that slash are known as divisions. There are three posterior divisions. Here, here, and here. And there are three anterior divisions. One, two, and three. So three posterior divisions, three anterior divisions. Now we're looking at the chords. These are known as the chords here, past the divisions. And we like to name everything. So this is a lateral chord, posterior chord, and medial chord. Why are they named that? They're named in relationship to the axillary artery. And this is the axillary artery right here. It's a continuation of a subclavian. And you can see how it slips through here. This is an anterior division. And it covers the posterior cord. So the posterior cord is behind or posterior to the axillary artery. The lateral cord is lateral. This would be the thumb side, lateral. And the medial cord is medial to the axillary artery. All right. And here they are all spread out. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. Branches are the small terminal parts of the brachial plexus. They're the name nerves that come off of the brachial plexus. And we're going to look at all of those in a minute. There's about 16 of those. So it's roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. Now I drew this brachial plexus starting um, from the spinal column and then going out to the left. But if you switch this around, this nice mnemonic would work. Real teachers drink cold beer. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords, branches. Take the first letter of each one and you get real teachers drink cold beer or make up your own mnemonic. All right, let's add all those little branches that come off. There's about 16 of them. All right, one branch comes off of a root. And then there's two branches here coming off the upper trunk. So you can draw those three in there. One off a root, two off the upper trunk. And then we have one here coming off the lateral cord. Now we're going to draw three off the posterior cord. So we had four lines up here, three lines here. Now we're going to go down here and draw another three. These are off the medial cord. And then, fine, then we're going to draw a contributions from C5 root, C6 root, C7 root. Connect them all. That's the long thoracic nerve. So it comes off the roots. So you have two nerves coming off of roots. And then finally, the median nerve. We'll draw that in here. So let's label everything. There's everything labeled. And I'll walk you through this. Dorsal scapular nerve coming off of the C5 root. Nerve to subclavius and the suprascapular nerve coming off the superior or upper trunk. Here are our divisions again. Nothing comes off the divisions. The lateral pectoral nerve comes off the lateral cord. And then continuation becomes the musculocutaneous nerve here. 
All right, let's look at the posterior cord. Nothing coming off here. Here we see contributions, of course, from 5, 6, and 7 for the long thoracic nerve. And that does it for the roots. Then we're up to the cord. The posterior cord, remember, behind the axillary artery, has three nerves. The upper subscapular, middle subscapular, and lower subscapular. The middle subscapular is also known as the thoracodorsal nerve. And those, finally, the terminal branches of the posterior cord, the axillary, and the most important, radial nerve. Now the medial cord, nothing over here. Medial cord over here, again, three, very similar to the posterior cord. This is the medial pectoral nerve, the medial brachial cutaneous nerve, which is a cutaneous nerve, and the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. This nerve, brachial, brachial means arm. This does sensation to the arm. Medial antibrachial cutaneous, the antibrachium is the forearm. So this is cutaneous to the forearm. So it's a little more distal because it's got to travel a little farther down to get to the forearm. And then finally we have the ulnar nerve here. Very important nerve in the hand. Now these two chunks coming to join to form the median nerve are known, they're given funny names. They're called the lateral head and the medial head of the median nerve. Lateral head, medial head come together to form the median nerve. Now I've got Marmu down here because if you take the first letter of these terminal branches, M A R M U, it spells Marmu. So that's kind of a mnemonic that can trigger these, these nerves in your head. All right. Repetitio est mater studiorum. Repetition is the mother of learning. So let's go through it again, darn it. All right. Draw four boxes. One, two, three, four. That corresponds to four vertebrae, three cervical, one thoracic. Draw a Y coming off between above and below that first vertebrae. Draw another Y coming above and below the thoracic vertebrae. Draw a reverse Y coming right from the middle. Draw an M on its side connecting the peaks to the lines here and here. Draw an X. Draw half an X. And that's your main body. Now let's draw the branches. One off the root. Two off a trunk, one off a cord there. And that takes care of the lateral cord. Three right here off the posterior cord. Three off the medial cord. Th three parts here contributing to the long thoracic nerve. Right there. And finally the median nerve over here. That's your brachial plexus. Here's all the labels in place. The long thoracic here, remember, right off the roots along with the dorsal scapular. Now here you can do a screenshot of this. You can pause the video, whatever you want to do. This is the nerve abbreviation key, so that's giving the names to all those abbreviations of the branches that I just showed you. And here we have muscles innervated by a specific nerve. So I show you what each one of those branches is doing. Most of these have just one muscle. These are the muscles, these are the nerves, axillary. But some handle quite a few muscles, like the radial nerve is the big extensor nerve of the uh, arm, forearm. And then the median nerve mainly does flexion in the arm. And the ulnar nerve, very important in the hand. So that's your brachial plexus. Good luck. Draw it, draw it, draw it.